Um, so we're actually, we've, we've covered those, those top five areas, and we're into a little bit of a bonus area. Um, and the first one is actually what Danielle was just talking about, that um, it's very important for any marketing that you're doing to, to make sure that you're tagging your URLs. Um, there's a couple exceptions. Google does know by default if you have your account synced properly. If you're running AdWords, it will usually collect those under your paid traffic. Um, but if you're running paid traffic in another engine, um, like Bing, for example, it's not necessarily going to know and could loop, um, lump that traffic into referral or organic. Um, if you're doing email marketing, you're going to see, if you're not tagging your links, you're going to see referrals from uh, mail.yahoo.net rather than your newsletter campaigns. So it's very important that you tag your links. And that, but that, what that means is if you're sending traffic to your homepage, like in our case, morevisibility.com, then you, your URL is actually going to be morevisibility.com with five, um, up to five parameters appended. There's three, three that you need to have, and that's the source, medium, and campaign. Um, and then there's two that are optional that give you a little bit more information about that. I would just point you to a tool we have on our site, morevisibility.com slash tag link. It actually walks you through everything. Um, you put in your starting URL, and it will give you tips on each of these and what you should include. And it, it will spit out a uh, completed URL. And, and you know, once you get used to that, you can kind of run, run with it on your own. There is no charge to use this link. I would highly encourage all of you, if you aren't tagging your links, go ahead and use the tool to help you get into the mindset of doing it each and every time you're submitting a URL or a landing page for a marketing effort. The other thing is, and, and Theo had talked about this earlier in the, the presentation, um, keeping a spreadsheet. So if you start tracking URLs, and this is probably even more important if there's multiple marketing people involved in tagging URLs for tracking purposes, keep a spreadsheet of what campaigns are being tracked as what in terms of not so much maybe the source um, or the medium, but certainly more so the campaign, which is something that you're going to be defining in addition to if you're using step number five here, which is that optional term. Um, you want to be consistent and you want to start to get a good schema, naming schema um, for the different sources and campaigns. Um, and the mediums are pretty standard as far as what you can choose from. If, if this is probably not one of the most common mistakes that we see in Google Analytics video, I, I'm not sure outside of maybe just straight up not coding your site properly, right. you know, this, this is up there pretty high. And even with advanced analytics users who really know the interface well, we still, when digging into their account, are able to find issues right. with tagging. Great, great point. And uh, I, I can't uh, emphasize what Danielle said enough. I, it's very important that you have consistency across everybody that's coding links. Um, for example, if you enter the source as Google in uppercase and someone does it in lowercase, that's going to collect as two different sources in analytics. So you, you need to be consistent and just to, um, basically I would recommend you do everything in, in lowercase just keep everything lowercase with the exception of maybe perhaps your campaign information. Um, you can use proper case for that, sentence case, um, you know, just to, uh, just to kind of differentiate that and see your campaigns there. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, I, but again, just best practice, I would do lowercase for the rest.